Tonight on Free Minds TV, we'll be discussing the debt, what your tax dollars are doing in Afghanistan. We'll also be discussing a case of a, another person being arrested for videotaping police. And Mexicans are going back to Mexico because apparently it's better there. That coming up tonight on Free Minds TV. Thank you very much for tuning into a brand new edition of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. As always, it's Toby here with you. And Nick. And I guess this would be something like the 216th episode we've officially recorded, or episode, I think it's 28, season 6, somewhere around there anyway. So, been on for a while and covering a lot of stories. Um, there's a couple that are a little bit different tonight than something we've ever covered before. Uh, one of them having to do with the border issue down mm -hmm. over on the me between Mexico and California. Different twist on the immigration issue. Never covered anything like this in over 200 episodes of people running the other way. Um, uh, I think we alluded to the idea before. But we've never seen a real story about it. No. So this is, this is groundbreaking. Uh, of course, other things that we've reported on many times coming back to light, such as the raising of the debt ceiling. Something else that I don't think we've talked about before that we'll be getting into, which is where your tax dollars are going in Afghanistan. Pretty disturbing. Um, we'll get into the story, but with the event of WikiLeaks, one of the cables has alluded to the fact that, well, your tax dollars, this new debt that we're acquiring, is going towards the pimping out and raping of young Afghan boys. Very tragic story coming from there that we'll be getting into the details. But first, I guess you can't really pay for this kind of thing without taking on massive, massive amounts of debt because we couldn't be in Afghanistan, the U.S. couldn't be in Afghanistan paying to pimp out young boys if it wasn't for the foreign policy and taking on trillions of dollars worth of debt and I guess mm -hmm. since we've been covering it we can't miss out on it. Right well I mean they did finally raise the debt ceiling during the 11th hour. Of uh, course. Which we you know we we pretty much said we expected um, they raised it another 2.4 trillion dollars so by the time they're debating it again the US national debt will stand at 17 trillion dollars which if my math in my head right now is serving me correctly will put us well over 100% of GDP in terms of debt. I don't think GDP is going to grow all that much. Um, and it's just really not terribly good news, Toby. I mean, I know a lot of people are feeling relieved in the short run because there was concern that, well, if a deal wasn't reached, then, oh, there's going to be a default and you know the bond markets would go crazy, which was a possibility. Uh, but the situation we're looking at today is that S&P and Moody's, the two big ratings agencies out there, are a couple of the big ratings agencies out there are saying that with the current plans uh, they're anemic in terms of deficit reduction. I mean they're increasing the debt ceiling and we'll hit that debt ceiling too. Like I said, it'd be about seventeen trillion dollars in debt at that point. And then you're in the danger zone territory because we've talked many well, times about. Well, we already about are. Ninety percent is what many well, economists. I forget the. the so essentially, the name how it's worked. I know that when people talk about finances with me like this, I, it, after about five minutes, I, my eyes start to gloss over, and it's just lot, a lot, a lot. But this is really important to talk about, especially now, because even if this kind of financial talk and doom and gloom does bore you, it does directly affect you. It doesn't matter if you're working for yourself you're, or you're employed by someone else, you're employed by the government, whoever, it directly affects you, not only because of things like inflation, but about how the economy does in general. And we've talked a lot about how the U.S. is going, uh, the federal government is headed for a cliff. They're going to go over it. The problem is you don't know exactly when. But as you said, Nick, when you go over, well, we're at 90% of GDP is held in debt, like 14 tr plus trillions in debt, and it'll be 17, that's well over what GDP will do, uh, will be at in a couple of years. Then you're in like teetering zone. It's more than danger zone at that point. Yeah, it's, it's not a good place for a nation's economy to be. And I don't think anything really constructive is, is going to happen. That's the problem. I mean, as I said, Moody's and S&P say that the deficit reduction plans are not very good. They're not really going to reduce the deficit over the long term. Uh, I mean, as we said, they're raising the debt ceiling. So in Washington speak, they are making cuts. They're making cuts to future 
increases in spending that they had planned on previously. They're not making real cuts to real spending. The government is not going to get smaller. The budget is not going to get smaller next year. It will get larger instead. The debt will get larger because that growth in government will not be financed as they go along. Right. So in real terms, they're spending more than they did last year next year, and they're going into more debt. They're not paying their way out of debt. And it's so, important to bring this up because when you read in what the mainstream media, when you just read it at face value, and I think that this is what a lot of people do, they glance at the headline, they, they read a little bit, it says deficit reductions. You're always seeing these reductions and cuts. No, they're spending much, much more money every single year. There aren't cuts. There's it's, it's going the opposite direction. So there's it's almost like this double speak about what's actually going on. And, We've talked about this for a few weeks, especially on the radio show, for, for many, many uh, weeks about how it would hurt if the debt ceiling wasn't raised. But that's pulling off the Band-Aid that needs to come off for future, for the long term. Yes, this feels better in the short term. The market didn't nosedive. Um, but in the long term, this is not a good thing. This is like putting groceries on the credit card or on the third credit card and then paying off the old credit card with a new credit card. It's not sustainable and it's going to hurt a lot more down the line and especially as interest rates go up because, because we've gotten ourselves in this situation. The US government's credit rating is going to be downgraded from a AAA to AA, which it should. I'm surprised AAA status is still existing because anyone knows that the debt's, the real deficit, the, all the debt, the 14 plus trillion, now it's going to be 17 plus trillion, is never going to be paid back. Never. Interest will be paying eventually. Uh, more, 100% uh, of uh, all the federal tax dollars will go towards just paying interest. There will be no military, there will be no social security, no Medicaid, uh, no federal programs, all the only point in federal taxes if we continue down this line, which apparently that's the way we're going business as usual. All of that money pretty soon will be being paid towards interest on the national debt. And that's bank. the case even if rates don't increase dramatically. But as you said, I mean, even with this increase in the debt ceiling, uh, the ratings agencies are saying it's, it's about a 50-50 shot that within a relatively short period of time, they will downgrade the debt rating. Now, will double A status make that much of a difference? Maybe not. I mean, the talk I've been hearing, Toby, is that you know, there's just not a lot of governments out there that issue as much debt as the U.S that have good, you know, good credit ratings. So in the short term, it might not hammer on us that badly because, sure. you know, who else are you going to go to who's still AAA? Canada? Well, they're not issuing, and they will still be AAA, and we won't. They're not actually going to be issuing all that much in terms of bonds compared to the U.S. So, uh, but I think in the long run, Toby, as you were pointing out, I mean, we're on an unsustainable path, and even if rates don't go up dramatically in the short term, I mean, eventually we're going to get to the point where we're not talking about going from triple A to double A. We're talking about going to triple B bonds for the U.S. I mean, we're talking about U.S. government debt being rated as junk. Yeah. And I don't think it's, this isn't something that we're going to have to worry about when we're approaching retirement, I don't think. This is something that's happening, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, but the way things have gone over the last few years, um, it's not. It wouldn't be surprising to me to see some kind of a real debt crisis within the next yeah. five years. And then you know, I'm I'm reading the newspaper and I'm reading some of the um, uh, pieces about how well this is very important to increase the debt ceiling because people don't know just how much money the federal government gives here locally. It's something like in just a month's time, 13 million dollars <laughs> in social security checks, and they listed all these all these important programs that are getting money from the federal government that just wouldn't other otherwise. Well, guess where the federal government gets its money? Besides all that borrowing they do, of course, um, to wage wars, and we'll get into some of the other stuff that they do in ridiculous programs. But everything else, it comes from taxpayers, you and me and other people out there. We give it to the federal government, and we're so gracious when they give it back. So that was one thing that the, well, the local newspaper missed here is the fact that where they get it. Yeah, they borrow some of it. I don't want people borrowing money in my name, but the rest of it comes from taxpayers. The, right, the 57 cents on the dollar that they, act, they actually have to spend yeah. comes from U.S. taxpayers. The other 43 cents on the dollar uh, is debt. So essentially, you know, if they're writing 
10 million dollars worth of social security checks here in where we're broadcasting from in the Menadnock region or wherever you're viewing you know that 10 million dollars well 4.3 million of that is just debt they're writing you but if you were actually going to have the money it, to if cover. you had a social security account and it wasn't just all general fund if it was set up the way they said they would there's still their ponzi scheme ponzi scheme is still working where there's enough social security well, social going Security's, in that it could come out so that one is it, it's still they're still able to meet current obligations today right 20 years their from ponzi now. scheme is still working right 20 now or 30 so years from now they officially well they're not to. borrowing for social security because they still got a pretty good ponzi scheme but, going on for but that they spent the money for the future so at sure. some point they will have to sure steal it Soon from they somebody will. else. Right now, though, what most of the money that they're borrowing for, if you really were going to car uh, put it in little segments and say Social Security actually goes to Social Security, blah, 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 um, a lot of the money they're actually borrowing, this debt is going towards their their foreign wars, their foreign policy. Huge amounts are going towards uh, paying for, to wage wars with other countries. We're in uh, I don't know, I think it's 130 plus countries, over a thousand military bases around the world, three wars. One of the bigger ones is in Afghanistan where, of course, we got to get out, but we got to train some new recruits first. We can't just leave them high and dry. So we'll spend the next five, six, seven years training new police officers, new military personnel, those recruits. But, you know, in a place like Afghanistan where they'll get blown up, it's tough to recruit these people. So let's use some of the tax dollars to... Uh, Throw some parties. Uh, this is coming after WikiLeaks reveals U.S. tax dollars have funded sex, child sex slavery in Afghanistan. The now infamous WikiLeaks recently released cables from Afghanistan reve revealing U.S. government contractor DynCorp threw a party uh, for Afghan security recruits featuring trafficking boys as entertainment. Uh, Baka Bazi is a form of Afghan tradition of boy play where young boys are dressed up in women's clothing forced to dance for leering men, and then sold for sex to the highest bidder. Apparently this is a sort of entertainment, uh, I guess, funded by your tax dollars. And of course, this is what happens when a company like DynCorp is involved. Uh, DynCorp is a government contractor which has been providing training for Afghan security police forces for several years. While there's almost no transparency, which is probably why this just came to light uh, through a WikiLeaks cable, 95% uh, of their budget does come from the United States. And I know, as Nick rightfully pointed out, well, how can you uh, dine corp? How can they help if a few of their, their personnel, their employees go out and hire and pimps to bring in little boys to sell to Afghan security forces? That's just a few bad employees. Well, it's not the first time this has happened. Um, apparently, in Bosnia in 1999, Catherine uh, Balavak, was fired from the company after blowing the whistle on DynCorp for, sta for staffers, multiple staffers, pimping out girls as young as 12 from Eastern European countries. Um, then there's, there's plenty of links. I'll post this up on the show con uh, content page on our website at freemindstv.com. Check, click on the forums there if you want to read more and click on some of the WikiLeaks cables that has brought this to light. But, oh, there was one thing I wanted to read. Check this out. It's time American taxpayer demand a zero tolerance policy on our money being used to support child sex trafficking overseas. Do you, do you need to write that? <laughs> apparently, apparently. Apparently you need yeah. to write I that. Mean, and unfortunately, the other thing this points out, and it does make it right, but this is a fairly, I mean, I've read... Caravans. I'm trying to remember the name of the book. I read a book that was first published in, I believe it was 1959, 1954, 1959, somewhere around there, um, dealing with Afghanistan. And this is something that's gone on there for a long time. Well, they it's did say it's a tradition. Right. This is where they're trying to build a Western style. That, I mean, that's the U.S. government's goal, right? Is, well, we can't leave until we make Afghanistan like the U.S. It's a messed up place. So is a lot of the Middle East and Central Asia. Like, they're still in the Stone Age in a lot of ways. I know you're not really supposed to say that about other societies, but they do this thing. Well, they're and so that's repressed. Still not, I mean, right, it's because they keep women inside and beat them and kill them when they show their ankles and things like that. And then they rape little boys. So I don't think they're going to have a very well-functioning free market economy with freedom of religion and things like that when they can't stop 
raping boys and beating women. Well, not all of them. I'm sure there's no, some largely, that find it no, yucky. I'm sure there are some, uh, but this but is where their society I, is at this, this is point. Where I this is where American tax dollars are going to support people and that's where who are still functional in this society. Not only that, but they're going to a company uh, th th that is recruiting people by pimping out these little boys and selling them to these future security guards that we're going to hand the country over to. You know, this is what I say. We, just this story alone should make us go, yep, not going to stay there anymore. Let's uh, <laughs> pull back. Uh, let's get out of there. Let's uh, not be in Afghanistan. And while we're at it, why don't we pull the troops home from Iraq and Libya? Why stop there? We don't need them over in Japan or Germany anymore, right? Let's just bring these so-called defenses over to the U.S. where they can defend the U.S. But they won't, and that's why I say screw it, let's disband the federal government there. This is what they're doing with my tax dollars. I have to feel guilty for this because I don't want to withhold my tax dollars because I don't want to go to jail. And I don't want to lose my house. So I have to pay for the U.S. paying Dynacorp to pimp out little boys in foreign countries. Not to mention the murdering and the killing and all that other stuff that goes on. And that's why I say, and the point screw it. Now, Bill. Like, I, this is just the way I look at it. Is this, Afghan society has not changed very much in the last 10 years we've been there, and it hasn't changed during the last several invasions. And you're right, Toby. Certainly, there's plenty of people in Afghanistan and in the Middle East who are, you know, they're progressive. They don't like these parts of their society. That's great. But if you actually look at what all of this warfare and all of this money has done, I don't really think it, it's leading to you know an overnight transformation of that whole region. I don't of the care world. if it is. I Nick. mean, talk. You can talk all you want about the Arab Spring, but if there are going to be changes that happen there, they're going to happen from within. All the places where the Arab Spring is taking place, not places the U.S. is really all that heavily Nick. involved. I don't Actually, care how well we, they're doing. We tend to, our allies. We tend to help them out, like the Saudis. No Arab Spring in Saudi Arabia. We still give them aid. We just make sure that we give them enough military aid that they can crush the uprising. I don't care if it's working. I, I don't care if we're changing their society and bringing them into the 21st country. If you want to do that, you can go donate your money towards uh, Blackwater or something and go do that. But I have no interest in conquering foreign dragons in other lands. None whatsoever. I don't want to stand in U.S. military going and holding up bases in Japan and Germany and hundred and there's thousand of them around the globe 130 plus countries it's not just Afghanistan that's a backward culture that we're trying to change here this is a this is a like global force that we cannot be reckoned with we must police the world no I'm, I'm done I don't want it it's useless this alone this military presence across the globe is enough for me to say do away with this useful federal government well and you know we don't uh, we don't have much uh, we don't have much ability to fund this anymore either. Well, apparently we do. We just raised the debt right. ceiling, Nick. I, I guess. I which mean, apparently is... We're doing so well here in the U.S. apparently is boosting our economy so much that we're having trouble with people running over to, Me to Mexico Mexican, from California. I'm documenting Mexican immigrants are now running back to Mexico. That's how well we're doing here in the U.S. So think about that. So because, then we question... Mil military spending yeah. actually accounts for a great deal of the deficit that's been run year after year that's led to this massive sure. debt. So we really need to start questioning where the fence is meant to ke keep, keep them out or, or is it in. to keep us in? Yeah. Yeah, it's both ways. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, according to this story, there are fewer undocumented immigrants in California, uh, and they point out a whole bunch of st statistics. They focus in here on, on Sacramento County in particular. Um, but out of the, uh, let's see, an estimated 300,000 undocumented immigrants left California uh, since 2008, though the remaining 2.6 million still make up 7% of the population and 9% of the later labor force, according to the Public Policy Institute of California. Um, and they point out here that uh, they have a quote here from Mexico's general counsel saying that we have become a middle class country. It's now easier to buy homes on credit, find a job, and access higher education in Mexico. Mexico's unemployment rate, I don't know how they calculate it, but I know that ours, we have a pretty screwed up accounting of ours, so theirs might actually not be that much more screwed up. Their government unemployment rate, their official unemployment rate, is 4.9% in Mexico. Ours is 9.4%. It's actually about 13% in California. They're, they're both much, much higher right. in reality, though. Um, 
Mexico is yeah. and the United the States. The standard Very of living in Mexico, obviously, is still nowhere near the U.S., but I guess now they top Russia, China, India, according to some U.N. study they cite in this article. Um, so a lot of Mexicans are finding it easier to go back to Mexico. I mean, sure, they could probably still make more money here if they can find a job, but... You know, There's a police to, state has taken and they over get to go, and it makes they, it harder. Right, they, they get to go home yeah. where you know other people speak yeah. their language, more other people speak their language. Sure. Um, so Well, if it's not just economic conditions, the police state here in recent years, because people are so afraid of well, the they, Mexican immigrants taking their jobs, right. that they set up border checks and they make they it so the employers out, go to jail. They point out that stricter and, enforcement yeah. might have had some bearing on it. But when, when you look at the fact, they also point out here that, uh, what's the other quote in this story? Oh, Mexico's economy is growing at 4 to 5 percent, uh, benefiting from low inflation, exports, and a strong banking system. That's according oh. to the Mexican government. That's like the opposite but, of us. But uh, High inflation, no, poor we're, banking we're system. We're nowhere near being as bad off as Mexico is. No, but we're However, headed in that direction. Mexico used to be a fairly prosperous country compared to what it has been recently. And Argentina, a lot of Latin American countries actually, Argentina is a great example, and people should read up on what happened in Argentina because that's in many ways what's happening in the U.S. today. They went from being a first world country, one of the richest in the world, I think they might even been top 10, to being a lower income country. Much, you know, we now think of Argentina today much the same way we think about Mexico and a lot of the rest of Latin America. The U.S. is in, is in the process. I'm not saying if we don't change, we're going. This is happening now. We're in the process of crumbling. Basically, our economy is effectively contracting. It's in real terms. It's not outpacing inflation, and there are large. This isn't just another recession. Uh, I mean, there are major structural issues that need to be addressed before the U.S. can can grow or even maintain itself. Well, over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Personally, Nick, I don't think it can be done without getting rid of the federal government and well, the U.S. It, it in general. You certainly. say that changes have to be done. I think it's too late, Nick. We've yeah. passed the point where you can put on the brakes. Well, you could just see, here's the thing. I mean, a lot can change in 10 years. I mean, you could, it's a terrible idea. There's lots of Print terrible your ways. way out and you come out with a new currency. Out. Yeah, well, that's what they've done in some of these Latin American countries. How'd that work out for Argentina? Uh, it didn't work out so well. Yeah. <laughs> all right. They, so. <laughs> yeah, all of the, everyone's savings were wiped out. Right, yeah. And, you know, it's hired on the poor and the rich and just about everybody. So, yeah. yeah there are terrible, I mean, but who knows? I mean, 30 years the US could the line, hit the lottery. A million uh, <laughs> things could happen when you start talking decades. Could out, just start right? pillaging other countries. Screw it. Don't like even Rome, pretend. Just take yeah, it. Yeah. Don't even it. pretend like you're in there to help free these Afghans or create a democracy in the yeah, Middle East. We for just a while. go in and just like pillage Canada. Take all their. What yeah. do they have up there? Canadian imported beer. Uh, they they have actually a lot of timber and coal. Timber and coal. And coal. Let's take their timber and Diamonds. coal, Nick. Yeah, no. they have a lot of good stuff. Let's just say, actually, let the like it. I say let the individual state like come up with states come up with their own laboratories of government and let this behemoth of a government that's sucking them dry just let it just wither. Well, at the very least, just cut it back. If you cut the federal government back to its con its strict constitutional size. You and got rid yeah, of it got rid of the way. standing military, you, which is part of the part constitutional of it, aspect. Yeah. Um, you know, you could cut it back 80, 90 percent easily. So it'll just grow again, Nick. It'll well, just it grow will. again. Let's Some people would argue that the state governments will just become bloated and sure. Some of them will, but others of them won't. That's why you have fifty of them. You let some get it's bloated like Russian and crushed. Roulette, you yeah. take your chances wow. about 50 different times. Well, you let individuals choose. Do I want to go to the bloated state of California? Do I want a more yeah. fiscally I mean, conservative people are, state? People are doing that already. I mean, with the limited amount of federalism that we have left, people are yeah. le We've reported, We've. I think it was on the radio show, but we've reported on yeah. how businesses are leaving California for Arizona. Businesses certainly do leave places like New York and Massachusetts and come yeah. here to New Hampshire. It happens Imagine all over the place. How much more competition there would be between states if there wasn't this federal government holding over everyone. Anyways, we do need to move on. And I know that's a very fringe subject, so I've just alienated a lot of viewers. But I used to be like you. Think about it. All right. I don't, think about the, the, where your tax dollars are going to on this federal government paying to pimp out and rape young little boys. Think about that. How's that weigh on your conscience? Because that hurts mine. I don't know about yours, but thinking about my tax dollars going to rape little boys that's not, that doesn't sit well with me. So yes, my comment of saying the federal government, let's do away with it, with it might be fringe, 
But that's the kind of crap that happens with your tax dollars. Anyways, moving on. Another crap thing that happens with tax dollars, but this is on the state and local level, is uh, police brutality. Uh, we don't have too much time to talk about it, but I do want to show a quick little video here, and then we have a minute or two for commentary. But I think the video speaks for itself. It's not a picture-perfect man just doing everything right. I mean, yeah, he makes some mistake here, but does not justify what the police do in response, in my opinion, anyways. Let's go ahead and roll a clip. Can I help you, sir? No, just observing. Do you live here? Nope. Just turn that off for me. Why do I have to turn it off? I'm perfectly within my legal rights to be able to do this. Turn off the camera for me. I'm perfectly within my legal rights to do this, sir. Listen, turn off the camera for me. No, sir, I, I am in within my legal rights to here. do this. If I do live here. You don't I, live I just here, said dude. I live here. You don't hey, live here. Hey, what the hell are you doing, man? What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing, man? On your stomach. God damn it! Stop it! Hey! What the fuck are you kicking the camera for? On your stomach! Oh, oh, stop resisting! No! No! Man. no! Why did you do that? I live here! You told me you didn't live here. I don't have a right to be here. I was so Where are you living? Right here! You live right in here in this house. Yes, look at my ID there. It's I will. A address. You should have told me that, dude. I did. No, you didn't. No. I, I asked you just to say that. Keep taking it out, please. Shut up. <coughs> I can't breathe. Please, come on. Roll medical, please. Yeah, roll medical, please. Hey, shut up. You're not in charge here, buddy. You hear me? This is my property. Well, yeah, buddy. Hey, when you don't, uh, when you don't do what I ask you to do, then you're in a world of hurt. Then you're in a world of hurt. Aren't you? Huh? Yeah, it's a good lesson. If you're not in a do what the police ask, you're in a world of hurt. And that's the truth. You know what's interesting is, yes, he did say, I think he meant to say that he lived there because then right after he said, when he said, nope, I don't live here, he said, no, this is my property, I live here. So who knows where that was. What's interesting, what the police officer wanted there, Collins wanted, um, was him to shut off the tape. It wasn't get off this property, it doesn't belong to you, which would be what you'd think it would be for is shut off the camera and then I'll kick your little butt if you don't. It should be noted that he has been placed on uh, suspension since April 1st, paid suspension I might add. Uh, they're reviewing the case, they say that there were some violations of the Metropolitan Police Department policies uh, there, so well, we'll see what happens. He could be put back on the job tomorrow or who knows, he could be fired. I should also note that real quick that yeah, he's killed a couple people, including a 15-year-old uh, mentally handica handicapped uh, person, this officer did, um, and another person. So I, I don't know, makes me uneasy. Think for yourself, I'll post the full video. There's some more uh, stuff in there that we didn't have time for on the website, but we're out of time tonight. So let you guys decide, was that justification? Is this the police state you want to be living? Not me. Anyways, until next week, it's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good one.